Good evening, everyone. Um, thank you so much for coming tonight uh, on this beautiful summer afternoon. And um, we um, are really pleased to be collaborating with the Science Museum and the Schuhoff Foundation for this particular display. Um, and um, in a way, this exhibition has been a really a natural extension of our exhibition program. And if any of you were here to see last winter the Utopia Limited exhibition, we collaborated um, also with Henry Milner um, on um, reconstructing iconic constructivist um, works. And so we were very happy to welcome him back um, for this. And um, we've got a really great lineup of speakers for tonight. So um, what we will do is um, we will, um, instead of having a panel discussion, the speakers will give their presentations. And at the very end, we will have a Q&A with Henry, so keep all your burning questions for him until then. Um, and then we will have um, some drinks, so you can speak to the other uh, panelists and uh, sort of ask them any questions that you have. So without further ado, I would like to introduce um, Tilly uh, Blythe, who's here from the Science Museum, and uh, they commissioned this wonderful work. So she will um, speak to us about the information age galleries. Good evening, everyone. So I'm Tilly Blythe. I'm the Keeper of Technologies and Engineering at the Science Museum in London. Um, and I'd like to just tell you a few um, words, really, very briefly, about why we commissioned the tower and how it will be placed on display at the Science Museum. Um, I haven't done any presentations because it's going to be very brief, but um, I, was, I wasn't really certain that I was speaking. <laughs> Um, so information age is about the last 200 years of information and communication technologies. So it will start from the electric telegraph in the 1830s and move right through to the mobile phone um, and mobile data today. Um, the way we've approached the gallery is that we're looking at transforming events, key stories that help people understand how this technology has changed our world. So these aren't just technological stories, they're not just stories of invention, they're actually social stories. Um, so one is the laying of the first transatlantic cable, the moment where a signal, a message can be sent from Britain to America in minutes when previously it took four weeks to even send a, a message there. Um, another is the birth of the World Wide Web created by Tim Berners-Lee when he was working at CERN. Um, so, the, the Shukov Tower actually sits in a story that we've created around the birth of radio. Um, so, this starts in 1922, and because we're British, it looks at the birth of the BBC. So, we'll be displaying a wonderful object, which is 2LO, the BBC's first transmitter. And it's the first time it's been placed on display, on public display. It's nearly the length of this wall and it's got fantastic big glass valves and a wonderful um, stop button where you can turn the whole thing off if it's about to electrocute somebody. And for us, it's a great story about how radio was started, but it's also, it's really a story about tinkerers and amateurs and people creating things. It's not a story of the professionalization of radio, it's the story about how you make this stuff and how in the First World War, people were very interested in um, amateur electronics, they learned about electronics, and then they went away and made radio sets for themselves. Um, so the Shabalovka Tower allows us to tell a more international story, to look at exactly the same period, 1922, and the creation of um, this tower in Moscow, and what that meant for the introduction of radio in Russia. Um, it, it really will be, we hope, an eye to behold when it's in its final resting place in the gallery. We have a central object, the rugby tuning coil right at the middle, and then we have four objects around that, and the, the tower is one of those four central pieces around what we call a plaza, the, the main central space for circulating in the gallery. Um, for us as well, the tower is really a chance to talk about how information technology is a part of our landscape and our history, as well as part of ourselves. We always tend to think of our new devices, our mobile phones, our televisions, our radios, but we very rarely consider the cables the, the, the masks, the transmitters that actually make our connected world possible. So for us, it invites visitors to consider that hidden infrastructure, and that's very important. We think that we actually think beyond the everyday. Um, so that leaves me just to say a couple of words of thanks, um, mainly to Henry, who's been fantastic to work with in 
in developing the tower. I think he's really created uh, a, a beautiful thing that both shows the lightness of the structure, but also the strength of the structure. Um, and it, when we first put it up in the, uh, in the car park outside his workshop, people came over and said, what's that? What's happening here? Where's that going? It really did delight people who knew nothing about it, which was quite exciting to see. Um, I'd also like to thank the Shukov Tower Foundation, who, without their support and contribution, the, the model would not have been possible. It wouldn't have been possible to commission it. <clears throat> and also, I'd like to thank Elena at GRAD for having this event. Again, for us, it's really important that our objects can go beyond the Science Museum, and I think probably tonight we're reaching an audience that maybe wouldn't have come to see it at the Science Museum. I hope that now you're aware of, uh, aware of it, you will come in October. It's open to the public on Saturday the 25th of October, so do come and see the tower in its full five metre high glory. Um, and you'll also be able to see a film about the making of the tower and an interview um, with Vladimir Shukov about the, um, the commissioning of the tower. And that will be put on the web as well at that time. So thank you, and uh, I'm around for questions. Thanks. Thanks.